Welcome to Behind the Headlines, I'm Lee Pacquia. My guest today is Kate Fritz, managing partner of the Silicon Valley law firm Fenwick & West. It's best known for its IPO and intellectual property practices. She's joining us from San Francisco to talk about a new staff position in her firm called a product manager. Kate, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Uh, good morning. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> let's start off by talking about this uh, this product manager role. Tell us what it does and how it fits into the overall staff structure of the firm. Sure, sure. Well, um, so it's sort of a funny uh, name I know for a law firm to be using a product manager. But yeah, it sounds it, it sounds weirdly corporate. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. It is. Um, it's no secret that the institution of the law firm, like all corporations, are uh, really under a lot of stress and, um, and also, you know, having to respond to a tremendous amount of change. And um, the product manager position arose, and we thought of it, because, in fact, we wanted to take a page off of the way our clients think about their customers and how their customers interact with the products that they're providing. Mm -hmm. You know, traditionally law firms thought of their products as the legal services and the, the quality of the legal services. And they really didn't give much thought to how their client was actually going to use the product or how their client, you know, didn't really give a lot of thought to the price because the price was just whatever it actually cost, uh, you know, the amount of time. We used the billable hour, and the lawyer was sort of the black box and was the access point to all of the legal information, and the client would come to us, and we would think about it, and then we would deliver the legal advice and charge for the time it took. Mm. Um, and that just doesn't work anymore. Mm. So what our product manager does is takes feedback that we get from clients and what they want, as well as it marries that data um, to... The, um, the information and the feedback, it marries it to the data that we get from our finance group mm -hmm. uh, with how uh, clients have actually used services and the way that services have costed in the past and analyzes all of that uh, historical data to be able to get the products and the services that we're providing to clients um, in better sync. Let's take a look at how this plays out day to day. Say a client sure. walks in the door and asks you to handle its IPO on a fixed fee basis. What role mm -hmm. would the product manager play at that point? Well, what the product manager would do is the product manager would um, look at the data that we have about histor about other IPOs that we've done, mm -hmm. and that would like include, say Facebook, <laughs> of course, <laughs> a little the, company the called Facebook. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but lots of other things. I mean, we'd look at data across a lot of different IPOs or similar sort of transactions or, or litigations, for that matter. And um, the data, they can look at the different components that go into that transaction and can see and estimate what the prices have been for those different kind of components over time and can give the client more information about what... Um, what those different components cost, and then the client can make different kinds of choices about what the client wants the law firm to do, mm. wants us to do, um, rather than maybe use, uh, do things in-house, mm -hmm. or use other sort of, of, uh, of service providers, or just forego certain things to a later date. Yeah. And in that way, the client can get better price certainty, and it's not just price certainty, but they can get, um, they can be comfortable with the fact that the price that they are expecting is in sync with the services that they want and the services that will be delivered to them. Hmm. It's a really interesting concept, but I wonder about the timing here. How long from beginning to end is a pricing cycle? Say I'm X Corp, as I often like to refer to myself. Say I'm X Corp, <laughs> and I call up Fenwick and West, and I say I have a project, but I really also have a rather loose understanding of the parameters of the project. How long sure. is the average process to define the, pro to define the project and then set a price? Well, we can do it actually quite quickly, um, but largely we can do it quickly because we have um, at least depending on the particular scope, and, and at least to be able to give ranges. I mean, there still is uncertainty in transactions a lot mm -hmm. of times, and, and certainly uncertainty in litigation.
but at least there's a range of kind of expected uncertainty in the different variables. It's common variables, even though there may be a range of different things that go on. And because we have taken the time over a number of years, we brought on financial analysts a number of years ago to actually help us analyze the historical data that we have. And, um, and at this point, we can really deploy that data in ways that we can arrive at information relatively quickly for the client. Mm. Is there a concern that by entering into a process like this, that your firm is basically putting out on the table the fact that prices are negotiable and then ultimately drive prices down? Well, I don't, no, I don't think so. I mean, first of all, clients these days um, are under tremendous financial pressure. And, um, and we've heard a lot about this, legal fees escalating. And it's not just that the price of legal fees were escalating, but that clients didn't feel that the price was in sync with what they were receiving. There was a, uh, a uh, inequality between the price and the value that they perceive. So having more information permits clients and lawyers to be more in sync about expectations. Um, and that is the big equation that um, is very important and that clients certainly perceive has been lacking in the equation between legal services and the price for legal services. You know, for any other consumer, that uncertainty doesn't exist. You know, when I go to the store to purchase something, I have choices that are in front of me, and I can decide to pay more or less based on if I want more features or fewer features, but it's quite clear what I'm getting. Mm. And um, that's all that this process provides so that clients can have choices. Mm. Um, you know, just, just one thing, I mean, if you step back, and you think about the traditional legal model and the way things were 15, 20 years ago, lawyers were really the access point to legal information. For a client to get information about the law, the entree point was a lawyer. That's just not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. Technology has exploded information for us. Lawyer, clients don't need lawyers for just information about law. They have a lot of different places that they can go to to get legal information. They want the lawyer to curate that information for them in a way that is usable for them. And the, we believe that the product manager position and these other sorts of things that we are doing are making us smarter so that we can really provide a smarter solution for clients that's really mapping to what the client wants. Right. And, and getting to where Fenwick and West wants to be in this process must take a high level of organization. Um, I gotta wonder, is there literally, literally a pricing list for your services that you have internally, much like a restaurant has a menu, so that clients know that an <laughs> IPO costs X amount and mergers cost Y? No, there isn't a price list. Um, okay. You know, and in part it's because while there are buckets of transactions that are similar, nothing is exactly the same. No IPO is the same because no company is the same. The process that they're going through, um, the issues that they might have are, are not going to be the same at all. And, and certainly the same is true with the litigation. But we can get a handle on variables, and not all variables are equally applicable to all matters. And um, at least that gives more information than the client has had in the past, and that is helpful for the client. Mm. Kate, we're, we're At least we believe it will be. <laughs> right. We're, we're talking about um, change here, um, and yes. I find that um, law is slow to change, and people in general <laughs> just don't like change. Uh, I have to ask, at the end of the day, who is more reluctant to pick up this new model, uh, your partners or your clients? Well, it's very interesting that you say that. I mean, it, law is a uh, precedential beast. It is, uh, it is built on uh, looking at history and kind of incrementally and very slowly moving forward. Right, we're not built um, for change, <laughs> as it were. We are not built for change. It is not in our DNA. But for the law firm to survive, the law firm has to embrace change, and we have to learn it. Um, I think the clients, too, um, Many of our clients and the decision makers are also lawyers. And um, they, you know, there's recently been an article uh, that was out in a study about the extent to which um, general counsel are embracing fixed fee arrangements and alternative fee arrangements or whether they really are more comfortable themselves with a billable hour. But there is still, for a law firm, it's very important 
for clients um, to feel comfortable that they are getting the value um, that they want and that they expect. And so whether, um, th no one disagrees with that. Uh, and the more information that you can give a client or a customer so that they, f they understand what the cost represents and they feel that the cost is in sync with their expectations and with what they are receiving, the better the relationship is and uh, the better legal services that we'll provide. All right, very good. Kate, thanks for joining us today. This was really interesting. You're welcome. Thank you. That's Kate Fritz, managing partner of law firm Fenwick & West. If you'd like to learn more about the issues we just discussed, be sure to go check out our offerings on BloombergLaw.com and also on the Bloomberg Terminal. You can see more of our videos on YouTube, and you can follow our updates on Twitter. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.